Yep, let's go. Un <laughs> Unbelievable. Hi, everybody. Uh, we got maintenance in an hour, apparently. Cart, when you're ready, bud, start, start the program. Welcome once again to Nook's Tavern, the in-studio live in-game podcast all about Animal Crossing's New Horizon. You can find us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nook's Tavern. You can also find us at patreon.com slash Nook's, Ta Nook's Tavern. Apparently, it's it's I'm having the hiccups today. Patreon.com slash Nook's Tavern, where you can support everything that we do. And with me, as always, is the... Salt and butter to my corn on the cob, Mr. Philip Keating. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm doing well. How's your How's your island doing this week? Uh, my island is here. It is prospering. It's still been raining, and I have flowers everywhere. Nice. Like, everywhere. Uh, and I'm pretty, like, I don't, I don't want all these flowers, but since it's been raining so much... They are everywhere, so I need to kind of cut back and do some trimming. But I have lost my last original villager. How did that happen? She moved out, and I said, good. Um, yep, Maggie the pig has finally moved out, and uh, she's on to new, new horizons, one would say. So uh, I had 24 hours to find a replacement before I was, you know, gifted one. a replacement. <laughs> right. So, so I went through 30,000 Nook Miles. Oh, did you really? Until I found somebody I wanted. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It, yeah. And who was it? Drago the Dragon. Oh, that's a good choice. It's a good that's choice. Really good choice. Uh, he fits yeah. my island. Um, I've got pretty much everybody I want. There's, there's still two more people I want to replace. But that will come. Time will come. Yep. But now I got Drago the Dragon, and uh, he moved in yesterday, and, and it seems to be good. All's good and dandy. Other than that, yep. I've been fishing my butt off. Uh, caught me a sunfish, which was nice. bigger than the moon. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, got me, you know, puffer fish. And uh, I've been scaring a lot of bug, bug tree, tree bugs. Just scaring them away because yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. And I'm not used that... to it yet. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been scaring them away, too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's it's uh yeah nothing nothing new i'm still trying to catch my sharks still not doing well i have a feeling that might be because because there's a little uh lag in the interface so in i might have to just connect my my device right up to an hdmi monitor rather than through like i use either the elgato game capture or like OBS or something. Gotcha. Like that. I think there's enough lag that it causes a problem. Gotcha. And and I know really I've been playing a lot of handheld. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, somebody who said, ah, "Why well, I'm just gonna play this docked." No, it's been a lot of handheld play for me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I haven't played much handheld. Honestly, I like having the bigger display. <sighs> I don't know, man. There's something about laying on uh, on the couch and playing. I just I love it. Oh, yeah, laying on a couch. I remember when I used to do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> no time for that anymore. Um, so, yeah, no, that's that's good. Uh, you excited about tomorrow? Am I excited about tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Oh, come on. <gasps> it's the new summer event. Ma, 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 ma. Yeah, ah, heck ow. yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, get to go diving and meet Pascal and... Get those sweet, sweet scallops. I love it. Uh, yeah, and for those who don't know, yes, the update is here tomorrow, uh, July 3rd. And uh, what that means is we are allowed to go swimming and give scallops to Pascal so we get the mermaid uh, furniture and designs and whatnot. And how you do that is you go into your, your local nooks. Uh, I almost said tavern. Nooks <laughs> cranny. Uh, and you, you go into the cabinet, and uh, there is your swimsuit for 3,000 bells. And you just pick it up, and you're all set, ready to go, ready to go swimming. Yeah. You know what the best part about it is, is though? More museum stuff. Bye. Finally. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. like, we had a big update in July for bugs. So, like, right. there is a lot of things to do. But but now we have a little bit more uh, on, on the aquarium side. Yes, we did get a bunch of new fish, but July was mostly, you know, a bug update. So it's going to be right. nice to have a nice medium ground. Here's my question that I haven't seen 
anywhere. Do you know if you're allowed to swim off of the islands of, like, nook-generated islands? I don't know. And I'm, are not, there... I'm not seeing that. And but... is Because, you know, normally when there's, a, like, a new update or anything like this, we have specific islands, right, that, that correspond with new bugs or new fish, right? You right. have Shark Island. You have uh, Tree Bug Island. Is there going to be a diving island? Yeah, um, I, I have not heard that, and, and I haven't seen anybody refer to that. It could just be that, we're, that people are waiting until tomorrow to see if, if they can figure all that out. True. Um, and, and who I, knows? You know, we do have that second update in, uh, in August coming. Right. So maybe we have no that's, idea what that's Nobody does. Happen. And I have some speculation, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I actually thought initially that we'd only be able to, like, dive off the pier. But that, that video that they uh, showed us, it didn't look like that. No, man. All. You can front flip your way into whatever you want, into a shark's yeah. mouth, I guess. And so... We're we're so it's gonna be it's gonna be sea diving only, you know we're not gonna be able to swim in the ponds is, is what it looks like. No, um, which is fine. I mean, what's there anyway except the the bodies of those that <laughs> Nook has crossed. Um, uh, you've been listening to that Bagman too much. You know, look, I might be his only acquaintance. Ugh. I hesitate to use the term friend. Okay. Yeah. So. So yeah, so that starts out tomorrow. Um, you know, three thousand bells for a swimsuit is cheap enough. Cheap enough indeed. So last week we were talking about the southern hemisphere and uh, not having the, the bug list that of what was leaving. Yep. Seems like you found that. What what, what are we losing? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, the reason the list was empty is because there was nothing to report. All ah, right. So finally, uh, we reported on something correctly here yeah. at Nook's Tavern. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and that's okay. I mean, they're in the middle of their winter now. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, it'll turn for them as well, just like just like for us. Uh, and, and we'll see, you know, the, we'll see if we can get past this whole uh, cicada swarm. Uh, because they do make <laughs> noise. You know that. They do. Yeah, they do make they noise. They most certainly make noise. We'll see how, how loud it is. <laughs> so um, so let's see. Uh, you covered the wetsuit end of things already. Um, did you see this latest news I got from Slash Gear about Animal Crossing uh, hitting an, another unexpected milestone? Lay it on me, brother. What's up? Yeah, so it turns out that the unexpected milestone was... In Japan, it has sold 5 million physical copies. Whew. And it's the first Switch game to hit that milestone. F your phys physical copies? Yeah, boxed copies. Yep. Damn. And uh, what's and, and I didn't realize that. I mean, because that's not... It's a good number. I mean, 5 million of anything is a good number. But... I didn't realize that no other game had hit that. And and it's being it's basically being blamed on on uh digital sales. Uh you know because digital sales are a thing, but apparently Correct. in Japan people are just clamoring over the box copies. Uh it's just it's really really interesting. And yeah, 5 million physical copies in 3 months. Whew. Which is yeah, that's pretty, stellar, stellar news. Pretty amazing. And yeah, so. as as we know, uh, you know, the more copies that are sold out there, you know, digital, digital, physical doesn't matter. But the more copies means that the more enticeness for the developers to continue to update and bring new things to 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 the game. Right. You know, if you have people still playing, then you have more updates to uh, to dish out to everybody. Yep, and with the, with them committing to three years worth of updates, uh, I'm sure that lends some confidence into people wondering whether or not they should buy the game. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's great, and and you know how it goes. If 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 uh, it's still crazy popular after three years, they're not just going to stop it. No, that's well, you're, you're you're not wrong. And uh, normally, long term Animal Crossing players play for long term. You know. Right. Um, right. I, I feel like we've hit fatigue right now. A little bit. Um, yep. You know, even even I have hit a little bit of fatigue. But, um, you know, 
it's uh, it's time right now that us long term players, you know, really buckle down and start start really getting into the more of the collecting and the trading and and, and whatnot. So, right. Hey, uh, speaking of which, uh, how did you do on on the bug out? We didn't we didn't even put that as a <laughs> as a news item, but uh, but yeah, we had our first bug out last weekend. Oh, yep, yep. There there was there was certainly a bug out. Yep, there certainly was. Yep. I, I I actually did complete it like i got all of the items um but uh in fact i think i got a couple of uh dupes um it was it was interesting and definitely more satisfying than the fishing tourney okay well that's good to hear um well only because there are more opportunities to catch bugs really i mean just by running around the island the the fishing tourney you had to either use bait or wander around to find fish sure and and they're normally in those spots they, you know they have like specific spawn points but if you go too fast you have to wait a fair amount of time yep um so and with bugs it didn't feel like that as much so um i was able to pretty routinely catch like 10 bugs each, i was each tournament i was pretty burnt out from work i signed in uh did my dailies and was like oh yeah look at that all right i'll I'll, all right, I'll get to that, and then I didn't get to it, so yeah. um, it happens. Yep, yep, that that'll happen. But, but I have yeah, I have one next month, so you know it's right. not like I gotta wait four months. Well, to this to it this again. month, right? It's, it's well, at the oh, end of this right. month. It's July already. <laughs> it is July already. So. All right. Well, we gotta keep moving because we are up against yep. the clock, and we got a lot going on today. Definitely, definitely are. Yep. So all right. So the next thing is uh, one of the cool things cool ish uh so animal crossing what we're seeing is uh is kind of infecting real life and and people are using it to express their creativity which we've seen and we'll see some more a, a bit later but um people are starting to or have have been doing um like little memorials for loved ones in the game um and and whether it's like a picture on an easel and they put flowers all around it or you know, I mean, there's even the gravestones that are in the game, but people are putting like lit candles next to them and, and really making it kind of a a sweet memorial to loved ones who have passed. Um, and, you know, if there's and if that helps them express their grief, how can you fault that? I mean, that's just people express grief in different ways. Right. But it's pretty sweet. I, I kind of like that people are able to do that and it brings them a little bit of peace yeah um even your co-host has one. Oh, do you i, I have didn't realize it's that. actually i've had it since i don't know i guess the week three of the game it's, yeah. it's been outside next to my house the entire time yeah i actually um opted not to <laughs> that's fair um uh, and that's just that's just me um uh, but uh yeah, it's I, I fault nobody, and if that helps, that's awesome. That's really great. So, um, so anyhow, anyhow, it's one of those uh, different stories that that I wanted to bring to the show because it it just uh, it shows Animal Crossing is pervading uh, all kinds of areas of our lives. Yeah, it's an outlet for people, which is great. It really is. And yep. uh, if it works for you, it's wonderful. And uh, you know, hopefully, it will help get through some things right right you know that's why this game has been pretty popular right now because it's kind of helping people go through the world pandemic right now right it's kind of a distraction from the real world absolutely so well and and in a really weird way allows people to to uh, get together yeah right that's <laughs> right? true <laughs> so uh and speaking of getting together there's this uh other article that i that i found on vulture that uh, shows a bunch of comedians are doing, well, they're, they're actually following in our footsteps um, and, <laughs> and doing live comedy shows within the game. Yeah, and so uh, the names that they're throwing out there, uh, Jenny Yang, Judah Freelander, or Friedlander, um, Yadoya Travis, I don't know who that is, uh, Ify Nadadui, um, Nawadui, Nawadwi, I think is what it is. Um, and Cristela Alonzo and Andrew Arolfo, Danielle Perez. 
Um, there's just they're calling it Comedy Crossing, and uh, it's they're doing these live comedy shows in the game. And All right. So they they do kind of what we're doing in that they're bringing uh, all all the people into their in, well all the comedians into their island, and then they're doing the streaming out on Zoom, and you can you can uh, join the Zoom and I, I don't know if they're charging for it, but uh, you can join the Zoom and watch the comedy show. Uh, yes, but do they a... have do they have the great idea to put a doll in front of their co-host's face so you can't see his expressions? <laughs> that's <No>. comedy. <laughs> that's comedy. They they do they did set up the traditional brick wall, and uh, and and uh, the microphone and the stool next to the microphone. Uh, there's a there's a screenshot with Judah Friedlander, um, and it looks just like Judah Friedlander. <laughs> complete with the baseball cap and yeah uh the sweatshirt it it looks pretty awesome so uh yeah the next one uh they're doing is tomorrow night at 7 p.m pacific time all right and, and the link in the show notes will will bring you to where you can rsvp oh it does look like judah freelander oh my lord yeah isn't that cool that's insane <laughs> so uh yeah so again outlets for everything right yeah i guess so so, um, otherwise, you've got you, you got your new uh, your new Islander. I do. So, real quick, actually, yeah. as I accidentally show the show notes to uh, everyone here on stream, <laughs> you uh, you were talking about something weird happening on Nookazon. Oh yeah, let's talk so, about that real quick. Yeah. So on Nookazon, you know, I've been following kind of the hot items. Yeah. And I went and looked today, and one of the hot items is a visit with Celeste. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So it's it. I, I don't know exactly how this works because I don't know how you can arrange for that. But all I can think of is people have predicted that Celeste is going to visit their island, and then they're selling tickets to come and visit their island. And you've got a Celeste visit with Meteor Shower, without Meteor Shower. Um, and they're going for like an average price of 90,000 bells. Okay. Which, I mean, that's not terrible. It's not crazy. It's not crazy because those those uh, shooting stars are worthwhile. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I had a Meteor Shower this week and I spent like 20 minutes looking for celeste and she wasn't there oh geez so it was Great. it was i was kind of upset but then again like i got 20 star fragments and since we're in cancer right now you know i got cancer sets of fragments right which was right. weird to look in my pocket to just see hey, look you got you got some cancer <laughs> got in your cancer pocket fragments <laughs> Now remember, uh, kids, cancer isn't funny, except in this instance. <laughs> well, that's weird. I mean, I don't know. That feels weird to me. It does, right? To auction I mean, off uh, the visits of people. I mean, we've seen uh, that you know people have been auctioning off other islanders, which is weird too. But it just like, like, where's it going to end? Are we going to have? Uh, visit a red you know red visit yeah uh I, that would almost be more valuable mm, I would, say. would it i mean if you you pay ninety thousand, and then you get there and well uh everything is fake well i will tell you though everything has been the, bought the average price for a red visit is two hundred thousand. okay i uh, just looked it up but um i'm sitting on a gold mine yeah it's uh and people are like Okay, for a red visit, I want you to pay me ten thousand bells and a yellow crescent moon chair. Oh man, I want that moon chair so bad. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, it's it's people are willing to pay stuff. I I don't understand it. I guess I'm not I'm not at the point where I understand it yet. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not desperate enough to need to get to that point because I haven't collected everything. I haven't really tried to be a completist in this game yet i think it's almost um, impossible yeah yeah it, it does uh seem like that would be the case um did you ever 
get around to ordering that uh, guide book. No, you can't. It's impossible. Yeah. Uh, like, didn't didn't we hear that Chris got a copy Chris, of Chris it? Chris got his like a week before it was supposed to release. Yeah. Um, and, and you never got yours? I canceled my order because like the last time they checked in with me, it was supposed to arrive mid-July. Ugh. And I ordered it back in April. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's too bad. It looked like an amazing book. Uh, it looked really cool, but I, I don't know I, if it ever comes out. To be honest with you, no like, people have it. Though. Well, I, I know. Mean, well, I know. But like that guy at GameStop was like, "Yeah, we're never gonna get it." Yeah, don't that's count your crazy. blessings on that. So and, and no electronic version. What is up? Yeah, that's that's just crazy. Well, what will happen is uh, you'll find them in Ollie's <laughs> Ollie's warehouses in like three years for five bucks. Right, because they have right. all these copies they can't sell now. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. So before we hit the break, I wanted to talk about something that me and our in-house artist, Emily Swan, were talking about a couple of days ago. I support her over at patreon.com slash a swan named Emily. But we were talking about art, right, for the show and what, what, what kind of art we could do. And what happened was I got fa- um, I got I got Drago, right? I just picked right. Drago up, and I was like, oh, man, Emily, you know it would be great if you started doing Animal Crossing Marvel crossovers because Drago, right? Drago would be a perfect Dr. Connors, right? Yes. Throw a yes. Dr. Connors jacket on him that's all tattered and ripped. That yep. would look wonderful. And she's like, oh, oh my God. I was thinking Fing Fang. But oh, Dr. Right. Connors yeah. is wonderful. Yep. So then for another two hours, me and her just kept going back and forth on, on different villagers done in the Marvel Universe. Oh. My question for you, and the question that I propose to our listeners and to the people here in chat, what mashups do you want to see? Uh, there's an obvious one for me. Okay. Like right away. Throw it out. Throw it out. Ribot, Dr. Doom. Ribot as Dr. Doom. Wow. Or Dr. Doom, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. That's a real good one. That, um, that was That's the obvious one to me. Um, the other one that I can't shake, though, is there's got to be a good equivalent for Coco. Uh, maybe. The one that I stood out and the one that I liked the most that, that we talked about was doing Blathers as the Collector. Oh. So, hmm. So giving him the white hair. Yeah. And the suit and all that. Um, I also... do you make the do you make Celeste the Grandmaster? <laughs> <laughs> but we we got deep, right? We 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 went through like maybe fifty or sixty different characters, and we just kept getting weirder and weirder. I I did see one that I thought was perfect, like that that you guys had in the list. Which one was it? Um, and that was uh, Anka as Apocalypse. Thank you. Oh, I was, was happy perfect. with that one. It was so good. It was so good. And she was she was like, "What about st- stitches as Deadpool?" Because you you know he's the bear is stitched all together. And I was like, "That's that's pretty good as well." Yeah. And and actually, he who is Steve has a perfect one as well. Apollo is Captain America. Apollo is Captain America is pretty good. Yeah. Um, Emily's shot out Boone as Doctor Strange, which he's the baboon, big hulking baboon. So yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know, we had so much fun doing it. Um, Tom and... Nook is kingpin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Thanos, but I understand. <laughs> so yeah, I just uh, I wanted to put that inside everyone's brain. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at Nook's Tavern, or just send us an email at Nook's Tavern at gmail dot com with your ideas. And uh, who knows, maybe your mashup can come to light and be an album art or uh, or whatnot in the near future. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. Anything else before we hit this break, Kurt? No, now I'm obsessed with finding out a, a, a dead-eyed Marvel character to go with Coco. <laughs> uh, with, uh, yeah, Coco. Well, you can so. do that after the break. People here in chat, stick around. We'll talk to you guys. You guys on the podcast, uh, listen to this quick break, and we'll hit you up with the community spotlight. Uh, we got to be quick on this, but I saw someone yeah. from Hong Kong is here. What? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. I can finally watch live. I'm in Hong Kong. Dirac. Oh, wow. What's up, Dirac? 
welcome, welcome to the live show. Welcome to your first live show. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> Tom Nook is Galactus. Tommy and Timmy is the Heralds. <laughs> uh, but I think, oh, wrong, wrong com oh, company. Uh, you do Tommy and Timmy as... No, I don't like thinking uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, but we uh, had Dottie as Scarlet Witch. Quicksilver, we had somebody. Hmm. You'll have to. What you'll have to do is, and uh, you'll have to pull this up. Oh, see, yeah. Ribot. We did Ribot as Ultron, which is a good one too. I just thought the coloring and the fact that he's mostly robotic like that would be thought... Doctor Doom. Look, feels obvious. I thought today. we had a Doctor Doom. Well, I'll put it in there. <laughs> I put um, um, KK Slider as Dazzler since <laughs> she's the only musician. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Coco was the Sandman. Oh. Because, oh, okay. Yeah, because she kind of yeah. looks like she's made out of sand even though it's cookies. Yeah. And then I want to see Beardo as Mystique. Uh, that's that's just that's for me. That's not for anybody else. That one's you know it's funny. I Daddy. can't watch. I can't look at Beardo without thinking Moulin Rouge. <laughs> it just it just it he strikes me. Okay. So, yeah. Um. It's a fun game. It really is. Yeah, it maybe really is. maybe once we get through this, uh, we uh, we tackle the DC side of things. Yes, because a, cool. a Pytro uh, Joker is definitely in yeah, the works. that's obvious. Yep. I told her cool. to do a Pytro as a Deadpool variant. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's get to the second half of the show. We're making good timing. Yeah. All right, bring her in whenever. And welcome back to Nook's Tavern. Thank you so much for hanging on through the break. Up next is our community spotlight. Phil, what is going on? So the community is 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 getting real weird here. <laughs> and the first thing that we're bringing to the table is that somebody made a beautiful antique shop. Absolutely. Like spider webs on the walls. The countering, the clutteredness, like the the like the the brown overtones, the earth colors, right? Having yep. it lit by candlelight only, clocks and 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 it just it looks beautiful. And and the thing that really touches it off perfectly is the placement of everything on the walls. Uh, yes, is really is what stands out to me from the paintings to the cuckoo clocks, the antique fans, like all of this. Kind of just is works. It, and it may not resonate as me, as much with people in different parts of the world and or country, but uh, here in the Northeast, as you know, you go into an antique store and that's kind of what you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's ju it's really typical. And I have to imagine that the person who created this, when the bug out bug out event happened and they saw that they could get that spider web, went, "Oh my God, that's perfect. That'll help." Yeah, because you don't just make this over the weekend. This is something no. that you're working on. Yep, and and boy, it just it's just perfect. Yeah, it, it looks really wonderful. Is. So the uh, the next thing uh, we got was this really cool uh, garden. People have been showing off their gardens, um, but uh, he basically said, "Hey, I've been working on making a huge garden. Why don't you take a look at it?" And did you go and take a look at it? Oh yeah, I've kind of looked yeah. at it a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's really it's interesting because it's themed. Yeah, um, a little, little mushroom, uh, you know, <laughs> mushroom garden, I guess. Yeah, they basically made pixel art of Mario out of their their, their flowers. This is something that I would do since I have too many flowers, but this right. is something I won't do because I don't have the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's it's just awesome. But not only that, As... like they, they cut a path around the actual garden itself. Yep. Right? So it just it looks dope. It really does. As always, there's so many people doing so many cool, creative things. Well, speaking of people doing cool and creative things, mm. it is part of our community spotlight, but we could have done it in the front of the show. It turns out that your Force pers Perspective is finally done, Kurt, right? It is. You want to talk it about is. it as I show it off? Yeah, sure. So uh, I didn't want to do the lighthouse thing that everybody else is doing. And honestly, there's another one that's coming up in the show that's 
that's amazing. Um, but I had this idea of doing an outdoor drive-in theater. And so I got the 50 inch TV that you can get that stand that, that you can place outside and turned it on and then got the little car models that you can get if you played pocket camp and set them up in front. And then I put a, uh, and it basically an antenna tower next to the screen and it looks like it looks like a drive-in theater Kurt, i love it it's really it was so it was so cool i'm glad it and turned out exactly how you wanted it to it did i i didn't get the the dirt that i wanted oh but, nobody sent um, you dirt nobody nobody sent, sent dirt. you matted dirt <laughs> nope. oh man we put but such a hard pull for matted I know, dirt <laughs> i know um so it but that being said even the photo that i posted um I couldn't get the angle right, but if you go up to it and you and you look around, there's actually a second row of cars there, and they're they're all watching what's on the TV, which appears to be a weather report. I, right I think they're just playing Risk. <laughs> that man over there is playing Galaga. Um, so, no, oh, back to the Marvel talk. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. It yeah, was pretty well cool, done, man. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm I'm working on another one on another part of the island. Uh, it's going to be way more difficult. And, and I actually am going to need some help, probably from an artist friend of ours. I don't know. Um, to I'm, t- I'm open with... to take commissions. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to need some, some actual ground designs to make it look like a winding road that gets bigger as you get closer. Okay. So, um, yeah. It'll... I have a feeling I know what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's okay, right. Good. I'm creating a bowling alley. Um, so, so, so anyhow, it's an idea. I don't know if it's going to work out, uh, but, but I hope it does. And, uh, it, it could be cool. I just love what people are doing with this. Um, do you want to just jump to that, that next force perspective one? That, that uh, no, did? because I already have Isabel up. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. So, uh, so is is Isabel up on the whiteboard? Yes, yeah, she is. Cool. So, uh, Isabel, and I can't see it because I'm behind the whiteboard. That's uh, that's yeah. the reason. Yeah, and that's that's behind cool. this doll. Yep. Um. So, uh, somebody did a painting of Isabel, and it just and they don't even play the game. It turns out, and it's just gorgeous. Yeah, oh uh, man, it looks but, to be done on on um like a matted paper with right, I believe ink and watercolor, or maybe I, marker. Uh, I thought it was uh, paint, so I thought it was watercolor. It's got to be but... watercolor just by looking at uh, uh, their signature on the left in that blue the blue box. But it's so pretty. Yeah, yeah, and honestly. That uh, texture of the paper adds to it so much. Oh, completely, and that's what I was. That you and I were talking about that pre-show. Yeah. How, just how the paper works perfectly with her expression and the flowers that she's holding, and just even the little birds that are flying around her. Um, everything just works so much on this. Yeah, and and the artist's name is La Tinta de Alec, and uh, I I honestly don't know if it's a man or a woman uh but they do amazing work and if you scroll if you went to the web the the facebook page and you scroll down it's it's all awesome yeah uh just just some amazingly really cool stuff that they're doing uh so go give them a go give them a look oh it looks like they may do some some live art on twitch and their twitch is twitch.tv slash art of alec a-l-e-c-k perfect um, yeah so we should definitely i'm I, if i see them online i'm going always just, uh, always support local indie artists always support artists who do art on yep. twitch um i watch about three to four different uh, art streams by my, you know of friends and and whatnot you know emily is uh, over at a swan named emily on twitch she she does art on twitch i know she's going tomorrow july 3rd so maybe check that out Awesome. But yeah, always support your local artists and just tell them that their work is good if you enjoy it because a compliment takes no more than five seconds. It could change the outlook of an artist's day. Yes. So let's get to that forced perspective that you were hinting at before, my dude. Yeah, so I think you actually brought this to our chat um, this I'm, past week or I so. I did. Yeah. Um, 
So everybody's been building kind of on that same uh, rock outcropping and the back of the island. Yep. I can't even believe they thought of this. It's um, pretty. It's pretty dope. <laughs> it's a pretty dope idea. It's just they made a pirate ship out of that outcropping, and, and it, it's mind blowing. It just. <laughs> so let's explain this. So they put a stove, like a stove, on there for the mast, right? Yep. They they laid down uh, some wood couches and turn them sideways to have them be the railing yep um it's just it, there's there's the rocks, uh, the log the log bed the log bed that they put in the front people are insane yeah but it, not it, only it, that mm. they terraf not terraformed they put down a sand pattern up top to make it look like they're on the beach right <laughs> even though you know they're at the cliff tops yeah, so. yeah, it's it, yeah. It looks like it leads right to the right to right to the pirate ship from the beach, which clearly it doesn't. It's just a forced perspective prob or, uh, <laughs> problem or uh, illusion problem. It's a problem if you try to jump off a cliff. Um, they they also they did the uh, the shop counters with the thatched roof. Yes, to make it look like the cabin on the boat. Yep, it just oh, so good, so so good. And this is, you know, there's a lot of creative people out there, but when you pretty much build something with furniture and tools that weren't supposed to be used that way, for some reason, man, I love it just a little bit more. Yes. Because the creativeness of saying, okay, yeah, if I turn these sideways and turn this this way and that way, yeah, I can make this look like something that it was not supposed to be used for. Yeah. The thing that uh, that it reminded me of a little bit is – I don't know if you've seen the uh, the art exhibits where people take a bunch of trash and put them in like this this uh, kind of order where from the side it just looks like a pile of junk, but if you go around to the front of it and you stand directly in front of it, it looks like a giant picture. And it's 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 this like three feet long, and yeah, it's really weird. Okay. But it's re and, and just to be able to think in those terms sure and in that weird perspective is awesome indeed yeah so so you did yeah. bring a couple songs we had to cut them down and thankfully we did because we had no idea that there was maintenance today right um but <laughs> the one that i that that you brought that i kept is uh is very very yeah how do i say uh, peculiar peculiar yes yeah Little uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, are, are you showing it on the whiteboard? I am. So, yeah, I always are, am looking for uh, covers of Animal Crossing songs. And this one got posted in the last week. Um, it's the KK Cruisin' song done by someone doing multi track French horns. <laughs> no. Yes. No. And Why? It, it sounds awesome because she's a really good she, French horn player. She is a good French horn player. Yeah. But why? Why? Because multi-track is what musicians do right now. No, I get that. But <laughs> And look, if your only instrument is the French horn, you may as well use it. You might. You may as well use it. I mean, you're not wrong. And, and honestly, it's one of those things where I'm sure um, – that you know, having played a band instrument, I don't know. Did you play a band instrument in high school? Oh uh, yeah, it's called the drums. Okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Why are you shaming me for playing for being a percussionist? No, no, no. You're you're percussionist. Oh, whoa, real whoa, musicians whoa, whoa, too. whoa! Hold on, no. hold on, <laughs> hold on, Mister Brass Tax. Brass <laughs> Just because my my instrument doesn't have. A, a, a read into it or or or, or notes oh i'm sorry I'm so <laughs> no, no stop no, no stop you're laughing i'm sorry do you t timpani timpani doesn't have notes yeah but you didn't really play timpani i did twice N not when the teacher was watching no when the teacher was watching <laughs> no so i mean but the, we're talking the point... offline about this yeah <laughs> the the point the point is that typically uh, whether it's orchestra instruments or band instruments, uh, people are trying. People typically try to, particularly if they play well into their adulthood, they try to 
uh, kind of justify their instrument. And, and th- how do they do that? By doing modern covers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, let's face it, that's how ska bands were formed. Um, so they, you know, they, French horn player? Sure. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if she's got a multi track uh, uptown funk too. Uh, it just, they do that just to get more exposure. And frankly, if they play as well as she does, that's awesome. Yeah. So her name is Elena Yi. Um, her video for the KK Cruise and will definitely be in the in the show notes. Um, give her a follow, give her a subscribe, and uh, always good to support local, uh, not local, cheese indie uh, indie musicians. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so I think that's going to cover our community spotlight. Okay. I wonder if uh, you want to you want to go outside and get your boy. Yeah, let me go see All if right. he's here. Let me cue this up. Pull up my music track. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come with me as we do our favorite segment. Behind the Bells. The Nook Syndicate story. Uh, hi, Phil. What's uh, up, Bagman? I can't see. Oh, no, it's just double protection, so nobody can actually get your identity, right? No, you, you mistake me. I appreciate it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, so, you're yeah. welcome. So um, so I apologize for, for missing last week. I, I, I think I was followed. I got about halfway here, and I had to do a double back around and go around the block six or seven times and then get back to my house because I, I really think I was being followed. So, oh, dude, I'm uh, sorry. I, we, you know, we were, we were a little bit worried about you and whatnot, so it's it's good to see that uh, that you're doing all right, that you're back on the lam. Uh, you still have your uh, your shakes. I do, I do. and But, but you know, I'm working on things where um, hopefully my, my reports will, will be even safer in the future. But, oh, well, let's but, hope so. So what, what do you got for me today? All right, so obviously this this week we're we're going to be talking about uh, Pascal. Love him, yeah. Yeah, well he, he's he's new, but I don't want people to be uh, tricked, as, as it were. Um, so Pascal uh, first made his his appearance in in Wild World, and well, was actually a, a, I, since we're talking Pascal, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna actually put my Pascal hat on. Oh, oh can't do it right now. Of course not. Okay. Okay, so, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, live show. Yeah, this isn't the way the rules work. No, so, all right. All right. So, um, <laughs> he makes his appearance in Wild World, and he was a key member of uh, the event that allowed you to get the Golden Axe. You remember the? Golden I do. Axe? Yeah. Of course, yeah. I remember it. Yeah. So, um, and he's he's pretty much a, a hippie type. Like you think Arv, but way less creepy. It's it's Pascal, um, and he says things like. The more you learn, man, the less you know. Okay, a little bit of, a little bit of like, uh, you know, uh, Lewis Carroll's, you know, speak he's got going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah. You know, he's, so, a, he's maybe he's yeah. really into literature. You know. Yeah. He he definitely is the the walrus in the uh, the carpenter kind of guy. You know, living in the ocean. I got yeah, it. Coo- yeah. Yeah. Cuckoo cuckoo. All right. So. Um, <laughs> You know, cranky villagers at one point had stated that uh, Pascal got hit in the head with a soccer ball when he was a kid. No, they and didn't. Since, yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They absolutely did. It's documented. <laughs> Hold on. No. Yes. I don't believe you. That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the, give, the me yeah, yes. give me your receipts. Yeah, give me your receipts. He lives so, in the water. How would he get hit there with a soccer ball? It was, it was while he was a kid. And and since then he started spouting this what I like to call nooklosophy. Um, so he says things like, "Love is one of those complicated things that only experts say they understand, and they're always sad." <laughs> I mean, come on, come on, it's crazy. <laughs> Clearly, Pascal is an agent of misinformation and confusion sent by Tom Nook. He I- says. I, what, go ahead. No, 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 no. Keep going. He, he says things like, why is a pizza folded over called a calzone? Why isn't it still called a pizza? What's their agenda, man? So, like, I feel like you would be, you know, kindred souls with this guy, right? This this water creature because he's questioning the world around him. Well, 
clearly he's meant to come across as like this jovial server surfer dude and and i could buy into that except he uses the islanders to find scallops and will trade for diy recipes which are the tools that nook uses to make the islanders beholden to his stranglehold on the economy now it is possible i suppose that he may have changed his ways but i doubt it because he keeps saying things like people say there's always other fish in the sea but man there are giant squids in there too Exactly. <laughs> Bottom line is that at best, Pascal him. is put into place to calm the increasingly skeptical masses. At worst, he's another money launderer put in place by and for the benefit of one Tom Nook. He's really floating in that CBD. Man. <laughs> All right, I'm done. Don't leave. Oh, a bag, man. Come on. This isn't a joke, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. You believe me? Come with me. <laughs> Come with me. All right, get out of here. Thank you, you freak. <laughs> I love Pascal. <laughs> Ain't gonna change my mind. What's up, oh. Kurt? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Come on, just sit down for the outro. <laughs> you look good. Where'd you go out? Did you go out? And oh, nobody can see you anyway. So there you go. Oh, jeez, what an episode. I'm so I got glad. Got changed this in the dark. And <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> I'm so glad this is somebody's <laughs> first episode. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, man. Kirk. Yes. Anything else before we get kicked off the server? I don't think so. I think we're we're getting ready for this update in uh, 20 or 13 minutes. All right, Yeah, man. 13 minutes. Let's uh, let's outro this show. Okay. Right, uh, I got to pull yeah. my show notes. It's my job. That's all you. Yep, I know. I'm pulling my show notes up. Come on, Phil. We're on a time limit. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and Twitch at Nook's Tavern. This episode of Nook's Tavern was brought to you by our executive producers, Bmail. Thanks, my dude. You want to support the show? Head on over to patreon.com slash Nook's Tavern and support the show like our newest patron, Captain Hygiene. Da -da -da. Thank you. He's in chat and actually in the room with us. Yes. If you have a one moment, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review like our newest five-star. Malrose, who uh, has said, fun and current. Great show, entertaining and current to AC topics. Hosts are easy to listen to. Smiley face. Well, Melrose, thank you for leaving us that five-star review. And because you have, our in-house artist, Emily Swan, has done a portrait of you. Ooh. So there you are. Great Scott, indeed. Uh, thanks for spending the time giving us a five-star review. And I will email this to you right after the live show. If you do have a moment, please head... Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> Learn how to read a teleprompter. Thank you to Emily Swan for our album art and the wonderful weekly art that she has produced for this episode and every episode that has come out. Support her over at patreon.com slash a swan named Emily and follow her over on twitch.tv slash a swan named Emily where she will be streaming tomorrow. Have a story from your island or a Marvel character mashup that you want to you want to you want to bring to our attention? Just hit us up on email at nookstavern at gmail.com and join the wonderful community over at Discord at tiny.cc slash nookstavern. Kurt, where can people find you? I can be found all over Twitter at VO by Kurt. On Twitch, I can be found at Kurtstable on Sunday evenings with the Bromigos of the Stream Apocalypse over on GSTU Media. On Mondays and Thursdays on FTH Beyond doing the Marvel Strike Force stream. And on my own podcast, which is Storytime with Kurt. Find it on all podcatchers anywhere. You can find me over at Imaginary Nomad on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram with a one. Uh, I'm streaming five nights a week, and that schedule is over there on my Twitch page. Uh, Botch Podcast, Breaking the Panel, Bro Migos, just a whole bunch of stuff. So check that out. Um, anything else, Kurt? No, I think that's about it. Catch some trees. And eat a brick of cheese. We'll see you next week, nerds. See ya. 
I know we have server maintenance starting. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, everyone, get the heck out of my house. Check the shops before the server oh, goes. Oh my down. God, server maintenance starting. <laughs> it says it right now. Did you get kicked? Not yet, but it's coming. Oh jeez. What would you like to do? Uh, Return get... to my island. <laughs> uh, uh, we need a show title, everyone. Oh God. Uh. Show title. Show title. Let's see what they say in the chat. <sighs> Uh, episode name forced uh forced perspective. It's forced yeah, perspective. That's, that's Steve. You, Steve. Yeah. D Rack says he's watched all the episodes and this is the best one. <laughs> <It's>, I don't know. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Mashups. I wonder if there is something there about Marvel. Um, Nook Ventures Assemble. Uh, oh, that's not bad. Um, you know what? <laughs> you know what? What? Oh. <laughs> I will save my five star puns for my own <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Oh, we appreciate you, dear. Yep. Oh, man. I'm surprised that they're going to bring the servers down for the for the update for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Unless this is something else. Uh, I doubt it. It's got to be for tomorrow, right? Yeah, but why would they be doing it now and not... Because at midnight, I think some people can do it. Or 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, they want to get it in now so that when East Coast hits midnight. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, are we going to stop our audacity? You? Oh, shoot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you. Yeah. Uh, what's right. Deer saying? Deer, 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 deer. You should do a collab with the podcast Crossing Animals. Um. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you have a... If you have a window over there, man, uh, drop them a line about us. I know I follow them on Twitter. Um, Crossing Animals, that's... I think that's Holly and Nintendo... No, it's not Holly and Nintendo Guru. Um, I forget who that is. Yeah, I don't know. I have it here. Hold on. <clears throat> I need to... I actually need to edit my audio. All right, Kurt. Get the so. heck out of here. All right. Good cool. luck tonight. I'll, thanks, and I'll I'll get that audio to you, to you as soon as I can. Yeah, man. All right. I appreciate you. you. Yeah, I appreciate you. See ya. See ya. <laughs> you leave my <laughs> Miami Dolphins mascots alone. <laughs> oh, ev everything froze. My game has frozen. Unreal. Yeah. All right, uh, well, I think that's where we're going to call it because I can't do anything left in-game, everyone. Uh, I'm going to wait till Deer gets back to me before we actually end. I guess we can still talk about it. Yeah, I guess they literally just shut the game down because it's, uh, it's kind of what's going on. All right, everyone, well... I'm going to go edit the episode. Thanks everybody for coming out for the live stream. Uh, dear, hit me up on, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Um, about if you have a window over on the, uh, crossing animals, but, uh, thanks everyone for coming out and, uh, Oh, look, Rossetti. There he is. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone for coming out. Um, I appreciate all of you. You people in the Discord, I love all of you. Um, people that are still here, I'll read your names real quick. Swan name Emily, A10, Captain Hygiene, Cap um, Commander Root, Deer AC, He Who is Steve, Kurtzable, Simpkin, Soapbox. I know Dell was here for a little bit, and uh, Melrose was here. Oh, Melrose is here. We uh, did her art. Great. All right, guys, we will check you out next week. Thank you again.